Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. So, we got a video with the Artillery Sidewinder X1. I love these printers, but unfortunately, we had an issue. So, unfortunately, the main board burned down on this, um, which caused it to go into thermal runaway, melt itself down. So, I'm going to go through everything we need to do to fix it, including replacing the main board and getting it back up and running. So, let's get started. So we're having a main board issue. You're going to see it pop up in a second where it starts to heat up uncontrollably. So we're going to do a video on fixing this. Um, you'll start seeing it get heat in a second. There we go. Sorry. There we go. I'm just going to shut it off because we're not going to melt it down. You can see it's not being told to heat up at the moment. No reason to burn it down. So, let's get started. Alright guys, let me take a second. If you guys want to help out the channel, we got sticker packs, different keychains, larger version of our logo so that these also if you get any engine work or buy parts from us stuff like that these get thrown in the package any helps greatly appreciated we really help love everybody that's helped out with the channel it's been awesome so let me start this off I love these printers this is just dumb luck what happened um, when you mass produce parts, they go bad. So, I was using the printer, plugged it in, went to run a part, and uh, I came back, I don't know, maybe five minutes later. I normally come and check and make sure that it, it's gone through the first couple layers, the fans kicked on, everything's going good. And I came, and luckily I did, because it was stopped right after it started the first layer, um, and I looked down and the thermistor was reading like 300 degrees when it should have been 200. Um, so I canceled it. I noticed it kept running away until the point where it melted everything down. I unplugged it, changed the thermistor out, turned it back on, instantly ran away again. And that's where I started looking into it and you know for this to go into thermal runaway protect for this to go into thermal runaway without the protections kicking on it means the main board failed so and the reason I say that is you know if the thermistor isn't reading basically what it thinks it should it shuts everything down so because that wasn't happening I knew it was the main board stuff happens if you're going to buy any type of machine, you know, I'm a CNC machinist by trade, I build engines and stuff like that. You build enough of something, unfortunately they're going to fail. So, you know, some people will get bummed out about it, I just know it's it's life. So this is my newer machine. Um, this is the one I, I did the video, the first video on. Um, it's probably got a thousand hours on it or so, so it's not, you know, I did a good amount of printing. My other printer, which is printing right now, um, has, you know, over 3,000 hours and has never failed yet. So, here's my experience with it. I have a whole bunch of spare parts. So, I like 3D printing. I like making stuff. I have no problem spending money on parts. So, 
what I do, you know, I've been into RC and stuff like that my whole life. So um, I used to fly 3D helicopters, which doing that, you're smashing shit into the ground all the time. So I have a pack that's got fans, heat brakes, heater blocks, heater cartridges, thermistors, um, end stops, basically everything you need. Actually, ironically, everything other than a main board. I also have the little PCBs. Um, of course, the one part that went bad, I didn't have. So, the first thing I did was I contacted 3D Hobbies. Uh, sorry, Friendly, Ho Friendly Hobbies. The guys were great. They had a board on the shelf. They flashed the fir newest firmware on it and shipped it to me. It was like under 30 bucks, I believe. So really not terrible. After I ordered it, I messaged Artillery. Artillery was great with what they supplied me, but there's a huge difference in time zones and it wasn't quick. So from the start of my emails with them to the end of my emails with them was about a week. After the week, they're sending me a brand new main board, um, the PCB boards, a new hot end, a couple thermistors because I had two burn up while I was figuring out what was going on. And they're on the way. They should be here this week. So on their part, although it took a week, which wasn't, wasn't great, they're covering it. Me owning my own company where I build race engines, stuff goes wrong, unfortunately. So I'm not upset that it broke. I'm happy it's getting covered. I knew this dealing with a small company that's in a totally different country, especially with all the COVID-19 stuff going on, that it was going to take time got no issue with it so that's the whole story behind all this and what happened and why I'm fixing it so let's get started we're going to take the machine apart and put the new board in and get it 3d printing again all right so first thing we're going to do is unplug it and set her down on her side Now the one thing, um, they have a sticker on the bottom that says if you break this sticker the warranty is void. Um, that being said, when I contacted them, the first thing they asked me to do was take the bottom off. So, um, you know, obviously they want you to work on a machine, but I guess they want to tell you when to do it. Um, Bottom off. Right Just so you know, I had already unclicked it because this was a part. This has to come out. All right, so now we're at the main board. So now there's four screws, I believe, on the corners of the main board. It's actually well designed the way they, they put the screws for the main board. They even put little cutouts to get to the lower screws, which was nice. thing we need to do pull the drivers as I break the heat sink off one Let's see if we can 
pull this hot glue off easily or if it's going to be a pain. It's going to be a pain. So I don't like to leave multiple wires out when possible without marking them. So as I pull, I'll just put them right into the place that they belong. And obviously I'll have to put thermal paste to glue the one heat sink that I just knocked off by accident. And they put a ton of hot glue. I found with this stuff is slow and steady wins the race. Don't just start yanking and pulling heat sinks off like I did stupidly. Um, all joking aside, you know, just pulling on stuff like this, these things are fairly delicate. So I've always found best luck to just kind of go a little bit at a time until it's all done. have done this before and you have a better way to remove the hot glue put it in the comments below I'd love to hear it's amazed me to you know over the past year that we started the YouTube channel hearing how other people do different jobs that I've done for you know decades at this point um, it, it, it's a neat thing you know it's kind of like putting a puzzle together in the end if it's all makes the right thing it doesn't matter which way it went together um, a lot of things are that way connector Now we're just going to start transferring over one at a time. And I'm going to do the plugs first and then I'm going to go to the ones that are wire connections where it's removing screws and stuff like that. And they really put hot glue everywhere.
So this goes. Now these two, there's a few of these that are just pinned individually. So you have to be careful where they're going to go. So in this plug and, and this plug, there's just individual pins. So the black wire in this plug is the second. So we're going to take that, put it. The red wire is the first on the top. Try to get some more of this damn glue off. Wondering at what point in this I'm going to stab myself in the hand with a pick. Grab a different pick. said more or less slow and steady wins the race so I'm just slowly getting it out in between each of them and I want to get it to pop then I take the plug out there we go Man, I'll give the guys who repair these things for a living some credit. This is pretty terrible. I want to make sure this stuff didn't come loose. Now the next are also pinned. So let me see if I can figure out how these are pinned. So it's a three prong pin going in the upper three. Probably the trickiest one of all, trying to figure where they all go, so far at least. All right, so the upper three and then the lowest one is the black wire. one which is right there alrighty one more plug and then just wires and ironically I get to use my new hot glue gun to glue these back down Now, 
onto the connections. So the flathead. So we'll just go down one at a time. At least these are nice where they actually have a metal prong on it to crush instead of just the wire. Go and loosen all these before we get started. So we can just slide them all in. That's why that's not working. Those are now flip side. So as you can see, the way I do this, which I do, you know, the same thing when I'm repairing a CNC machine, um, I try not to take apart any more than I need to. Sometimes that's not the case. And then you can actually buy little tags that go on the wires um, and tag them with all the different numbers. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll put them on all the wires and then I'll take a picture and then go back and uh, look at the picture and put it all back together. Because the last thing you want to do is pull it all apart and then go, man, I wonder how that went back together. And then you got a real headache. Now, give me a second so I can get some thermal paste and the hot glue gun. All right, so now I'm back. So here's the hot glue gun I was telling you about. Actually, uh, Jeff Dunham, the comedian, has a YouTube channel that he was talking about this glue gun. And I saw it and I wanted to get it when it's needs. 240 watts goes up to 220C, which is like 400 degrees. This is a badass hot glue gun. So, and ironically, this is the first time I'm going to get to use it. So, I'm not going to go as crazy as they did. I'm mainly going to go in the areas that uh, are like individually pinned. So I'll do little dabs on some of them. There we go. Try not to go so insane so if this thing ever has to come apart again, it's nowhere near as bad. I'm just doing the sides of the connector so it'll be easy to kind of pop it if I need to. There we go. Got that, got that, got that. A little dab will do you there. There we go. So that's it for the new hot glue gun. Thank you for your service. Now, thermal paste. So normally like a two-part epoxy or at least all the stuff that I've used is. Yeah. 
feels like there's actually a little in there. It's just a lot of it's dry. Let's see. Oh, come on, let there be a little. Unfortunately, we might be SOL, but we're going to try. And I'll just have to leave the bottom open and check if this actually dries. Well, open the bottom back up in a couple days and check if it dries and order some more compound. Alrighty. So we'll put this concoction on. I was always told to make it thin, just enough so it's stuck, so. There we go. Back on. And let's start putting her back together. Alrighty. Let's start putting her all back together now. I will say the one nice thing with this machine is the cable routing is really, really nice. I've seen some other machines that everything's everywhere. You know, the power supply is nicely mounted. They have all these little 3D printed sections that the cables are held in. Also a little protector here that keeps the wires away from all the aluminum extrusions. Um, very well designed and thought out. The other thing I want to say while I'm putting this together, you know, all of these 3D printers I paid for with my own money. Um, none of them are given, um, you know, on YouTube, if you're given something, um, you have to basically say it. So, which is why, you know, if you go on um, 3D printing nerd, teaching tech, makers muse, print general, um, Film and Friday, like all those guys will say, you know, I was given this machine by Creality or Artillery or anyone, um, and they do the review. I bought this machine from looking at a lot of their videos with how much nice things they had to say about this printer, and that's where I bought the first one. And after using it a long time, you know, with all the COVID stuff, um, for those that don't know, my wife's a nurse, um, and her place needed face shields. So, I picked up another printer. So, you know, these printers were printing for a good amount of time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, making face shields that I just donated to help my wife's job out. Um, so all the impressions I have of these machines are my own. I've seen some other people have different issues. Most of the issues that people have with this machine are, are self-induced. You know, if you're buying a 3D printer and you've never done it before, which, you know, the price range of this machine is normally the case, you know, it's normally your first or second printer. Um, you know, learning how to slice stuff, especially, you know, this machine, you know, I do everything with Cura. Um, and then I have 3D Nexus's profile. And that's what I print everything with. I've had great success. I've also used just the, the Creality uh, CR10 Pro profile, which worked well. But a lot of people that have issues, um, a lot of times they're self-induced, you know, trying to learn how to level a machine correctly, stuff like that. Um, both of these machines have printed phenomenally out of the box. And, you know, there's probably a combined, I don't know, over 4,000 hours combined between the two machines. Um, and this is my first failure on them. Um, you know, the only other thing I, I've changed on them, uh, which I had only changed once, I, I went to a, a hardened nozzle um, because my son likes the glow-in-the-dark filament and I was told that that really really wears on nozzles quickly so I figured you know put a hardened nozzle in it and never have to worry about it again that's basically what I've done and those hardened nozzles have stayed in um, the one machine that's printing jet ski parts right now 
Uh, that has an all-metal hot end where I put an all-metal heat break in it. Um, and I only print PVTG on that machine. This machine, I print both, so uh, I've kept it. The PTFE lined heat break, and I've had really, really good luck with it. So, all right, get this all back together. Let me plug her back in, and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed she doesn't let the smoke out. But then again, if it does, it'll make good video. Alright, the first thing I gotta do, let's home the machine real quick. So, I had to cut the filament off because it overheated and melted everything down and I didn't want to mess with it. So the first thing we're going to have to do is warm up the hot end and uh, get the filament out. Heat up the hot end to 200. So we're already in great shape because we're getting accurate readings and the thing isn't running away. So, as I showed in the beginning of the video, basically you turn this thing on and it would instantly start heating up. Um, which my understanding, uh, hearing some other guys talk about it is it's the MOSFET. Um, you know, I know a little bit about electronics, but not all that much. You know, here's the old board that we removed. So I'm going to try to figure out which one of the MOSFETs it was that burned out, and I'm going to try to replace it. So I have an extra board laying around. Um, you know, I have two machines. Artillery did send a uh, whole bunch of extra parts for me. So, and that's the main thing I want to say on this. All things break. A lot of people get into like bash contests where they want, oh, this thing's a piece of crap or this, that, and another. There's a guy on the other YouTube video that kept saying that these machines were junk. Um, and I asked him if he owned one and he didn't comment. So, it, you know, if you read forums about issues that certain machines have um, to me I don't think you should bash something unless you own it um, and if you worked with it yourself because unfortunately stuff goes wrong um, it's it's kind of a fact of life um, it's more how the company takes care of you after the incident that matters to me. And all I can say is although it, it took time to deal with it, um, they took care of it. like we are really stuck which means we're gonna have to take this apart
one's hot. Alright, so let's shut it down and let it cool down and take her apart. I'm just going to start. Taking the fan screws off. One thing when you're removing this side plate, you have to be careful of the wire tie. It always seems to snag on that wire tie. Right, set that back in. Let's see what the heck is going on here. Okay. So yeah. As you can see, when it overheated it, melted. the PTFE tube. Just cut it and remove it. Get a new PTFE tube. size Make sure it's not pinched perfect all right that's in Carp for the horse.
always make sure when you put it back together just move the gear by hand make sure nothing's binding Fan back on. Turn it back on. There we go. Perfect. Got the tension set up again. Ready to rock and roll. Alright. Time to start printing with this thing again. As always guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope this was helpful for you guys. At least you guys now know how to change the main board on one of these. Um, you guys have a good day. Again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, have a good day.